Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Mitch Comer, and today I'm building a new headlight. Um, this one's going to be crazy. Uh, so I've done this, a similar project before. Um, it was on a Corolla. Uh, these headlights are specifically for the 4G Eclipse 2006. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be putting a, uh, a speaker in it, in the headlight unit. Um, I've done something similar to the Toyota Corolla, although it wasn't in the headlight unit itself. It was near it. Um, it was in the hood, and I've gotten a lot of remarks about how awesome it is to have, um, you know, speakers in the hood, and everybody's really enjoyed it. Um, I got a pretty good amount of views on how to put a speaker in the hood, um, so I'm going to go ahead and put one in the headlight unit, which is actually turned out really easy, um, but I'm going to show you the process of how to build the headlights themselves. Um, first things first, I, as you can see, I have to heat up the glue around the headlights unit, um, in order to, to loosen up the glue, um, I actually had to use it to heat up the, uh, the, the screws that were holding the plastic together too, because the glue was just anchoring them on and it was really hard. Um, now these headlights are, were previously used. Um, they came with the Eclipse that I had bought myself and I don't know if you guys saw before, but I had rebuilt the headlights already on a, on a different set um brand new set and they have uh bluetooth lighting and it's it's just a really cool setup um this particular case it's i will be getting i will be selling or doing whatever giving this one out um but it is a forewarning that these headlights are previously used and you can tell they're previously used they're dirty as fuck <laughs> excuse my language but they were so dirty um, the lights on top of the, uh, the headlights, as you can see, the two holes and the, the long slab, they're, those lights are missing. Um, I don't know what the previous owner did with them, but they're not there anymore. So you could go ahead and do whatever you want to do with that. Now the lights that encircle the actual bulb of the headlight, those lights are still working. Um, you almost can't even tell that they're on though, because the lights I'm going to put in, uh, the switchbacks, they're going to be a lot brighter and they're going to overwhelm those lights. So you don't even have to really worry about those lights uh, to be general. Um, but yeah, you can easily put in some other type of LEDs on the top if that's what you're into. Um, it's not necessary. It's really not. Um, my my own kit, my own headlights, I actually have Bluetooth headlights up in, in that area. Um, I'm planning on building another kit. If you're interested, let me know. Um, if you want speakers in it or you want something crazy in it, just let me know and I'll do my best. Um, but yeah, so here I am. I'm cleaning out these headlights. Um, there's really no problems with the headlights. Uh, they need to be readjusted. Um, I noticed when I was when I first bought the Eclipse and I was driving it around at night, I noticed that the headlights were not angled perfectly and I noticed that um, they weren't matching up. And you can easily do that yourself. In order to do that, there are screws. Well, they look like screws on the back of the headlight unit. And what you do is simply take a screwdriver and tighten it or loosen it, depending on whatever you need to do. Um, there should be two of them, and that is to help you get that angle that you need. Um, you probably want to do it with the car on. <laughs> so as you see, I'm just cleaning out, cleaning this out. Uh, I actually take it over to the shower. Um, I get it wet uh, to try to get all that dirt off as much as I can. Um, there's definitely some spiderweb cracking type of looking thing going on. Um, but I mean, what, what do you expect? It's, they're poorly taken care of. Even the insides of the, the, uh, the actual housing, the plastic housing to protect everything, even the inside of that was dirty. So it was, it was a pain in the butt. <laughs> So it's pretty pretty easy. Um, I couldn't really get all that wet because I didn't want to mess up the lens. And I didn't want to mess up any little electronics and stuff that were inside of it, such as the bulb. Um, so I'm just adding pressure to it and rubbing it. Sometimes you just got to rub one out, you know. I mean the dirt. You got to rub the dirt out, you know. Um, but yeah, as you see, that's the part, the part that I'm screwing right now. That is the adjustment. Um, I'm actually trying to see if I can't get it out or not, and I, I wasn't able to get it out. Um, I was trying to do something different with the actual lens, 
and I wasn't able to do it. So this is what I was planning on doing with the lens. Um, I was never able to get the glass etching chemical to work on for some reason on headlight lenses, so I had to give up on that. And so yeah, it was a lost cause. I did something else to make it a little bit different though. Um, I actually put in uh, red reflective tape in the back of the lens, not directly attached to the lens, but just in the back of the housing. And it, at a certain angle, it gives it a red, uh, red sort of like a red glow, a red eye, um, if you will. Over here, I'm simply working on the fitting and uh, make sure that everything looks good. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and grab these uh, switchbacks. Um, as you can see in the background, that, that red stuff is the reflective tape. Um, but I'm grabbing this uh, switchbacks. Um, you can use it as a solid white or a solid orange or whatever you want. But the purpose of a switchback is, is a turn signal. Um, as you can see in these headlights, the turn signal is missing. Um, I don't, I guess I, I just took it out and put it into my new headlights, which you can obviously do. Um, or you could just leave it out and use these as your turn signal. Um, they're a little tricky to wire. Um, you you kind of have to know how to do it. If you do it wrong, but the turn signal works, you may end up with your hazards in the back on permanently. Uh, I don't, <laughs> you just, you got to... Finale, fin finesse it. You got to kind of finesse it. Now here, I actually finally got the uh, uh, switchbacks in, and I'm trying to work out and get this speaker in. Um, I had to grab the heat gun, uh, loosen up the plastic in this in the one of the sockets, and carve out a tiny little niche. And that way I was able to fit the uh, speaker in perfectly. Um, as you can see, that's the headlight with the switchback in it. Um, and then I had to, with, with the switchback, it has a wire that has to run in the back. And I didn't want to drill another hole, so I put it right over uh, the, the little light. Because when you put this in, there's a huge gap and it fits perfectly. And I just used some, um, what's that, electric tape. It's that reflective tape and I that, like, that silver tape whatever it is and I held the wire down because it's a black wire and it would contrast way too much and then I ran it through the back and now I have the speaker and I have some wire for the speaker I'm um, sadly these speakers they don't say which one's positive and negative um, it's really not that big of a problem as long as you just figure out which one's positive which one negative um, you're not gonna blow your speaker up if you put it the wrong way. Um, it's not, it's not great for your speaker, but it it won't hurt it while you're testing it to see which wire is which. Um, I tested it myself in a few. I'll show you in a few seconds. Um, these are technically computer speakers. Um, they're a little bit, I guess, higher end. They're supposed to produce bass a little bit better. Um, I may look into a different set of speakers. Um, later on, just depending on how well these do, um, but these are these are pretty inexpensive speakers and they're easy to install, so it's no no harm, no foul if they somehow just die for whatever reason. Um, as long as you have some paneling over your tires, you should be good. Your speaker shouldn't die or anything. Um, the rain shouldn't mess with it. Uh, the speakers in my hood, I actually surrounded with. Uh, football. I actually cut a football open and used that. I'm gonna go ahead and test these lights. Um, I grabbed a, uh, a really old, I think it was a speaker, like the power unit for a speaker, computer speaker, and I cut the wires and used it for lights to test them. Um, this is really small so it's hard to get them perfectly without touching each other. That is the amber churning signal. Um, it's a little bit more orange than that, I guess, in the in real life. I'm gonna go ahead and try to figure out how to turn the the white signal on. Just give me a second, and I figure out which pattern is the correct pattern. There's there's three pins, and I have to figure out which one's the right one. There we go, and that is the white one. And as you can see, that is extremely bright. That's a lot brighter than whatever those 
halos can possibly produce and the switchback produces a lot meaner look um, so it gives you a lot of more aggressive look and it's a lot better looking now this part tends to be the more frustrating part um, as you have to be super precise and particular about everything um, I'm putting the the middle piece back to the the lens and the reason that this is hard to do is that the, all the wiring is already in place but I have to screw that middle piece to the lens and so I'd be loosening up the wiring um, and the reason that it loosens up is because I have to get just enough space to be able to screw everything back together um, the you see the socket where right next to the speaker um, so there was originally two sockets and now there's only one where all the wiring is coming out uh, what I did was I cut a little hole and I put all the wiring through there um, so that you know it's not a huge mess and it's not coming out from all over the place so I have the lens partially just barely removed and I'm trying to screw everything back together while not you know breaking anything um, I did end up having to to sort of look at it at a certain angle and pull a wire a little bit tighter because it was starting to loosen up and um but yeah i pulled it tighter and it looks looks good as new again so what i've done here is um i'm taping up the wires so they're not a huge mess when uh, a person gets them and i'm gonna separate the audio wires from all the lights um and i'm hoping that you guys will realize that hey this is an audio wire. Let's not tap that into some lights because we don't want to cause a huge problem. Now, push comes to shove, it's probably not going to do anything. You might hear static, but I don't want to. We don't want to test that right now. Um, you want to? If you want to do that, you can go ahead and get your own speakers, get on your channel, and make your own video, right? <laughs> but I'm going to go ahead and keep them separate. Um, I'm going to write on a piece of tape, audio. And that is the audio wires. Now again, the the copperish wire versus the silverish wire. Um, there, it doesn't really matter which one you use because these are just small wires, um, and one does not mean positive, one does not mean negative. That's just how I had wired wired it because, as you remember earlier, I don't know which one's positive, and which one's negative in the speaker unit. That's just. I just wired it because I know that that's how it works. I've been doing speakers for a very long time. In fact, I've set up my whole car on nothing but computer speakers. Um, each door would have four speakers. On the roof, I had two speakers. In the hood, I had three speakers. Um, in the trunk, I had six speakers, um, not counting subwoofers everywhere. So yeah, I've been doing speakers for a very long time. So let's go ahead and test out these speakers. Uh, we're gonna notice when they cut in and when they're gonna cut out. Enjoy the music, by the way. It's Harry Potter. speakers it's actually super easy all you're gonna have to do is take those wires uh, run some new wires from previous existing speakers um, you know you splice them in and then you're set thank you guys for watching